socialize just a little bit while I get them finished coordinating up. It's been a long evening for some of us, but it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Y'all stand and greet each other tonight. All right, so um, as you're making your way back to your seats, uh, we're going to do a song uh, just to open us up tonight, and uh, then we'll get started with uh, the things that we have planned for sharing, and uh, so Noah's going to play for us since we've moved the piano off stage, and um, anyway, take it away, Noah. Here we go. Why you never chose me? There's always been a mystery All my life I've been told I belong At the end of the line With all the other not quites With all the never get it right Well it turns out they're the ones you were looking for all this time Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus I'm living for the world to see Nobody but Jesus Well, Moses had stage fright And David brought a rock to a sword fight you picked 12 outsiders nobody would have chosen and you changed the world well the moral of the story is everybody's got a purpose so when i hear that devil start talking to me saying who do you think you are i'll say i'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody who saved my soul Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history. As another blood-bought faithful member of the family. And if they all forget my name, 
Well, that's fine with me. Living for the world to see. Nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history. As another blood fall, faithful member of the family. And if they all forgive my name, well, that's fine with me. Living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Ever since you rescued me, you gave my heart a song to sing. Living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. Amen. You can go ahead and have a seat. So before we get started tonight, I've got a little disclaimer. Um, we're going to show a slideshow to start things off, uh, and that slideshow has some copyrighted music to it and we don't want to be in YouTube jail. So if you're watching online tonight, uh, we're going to cut the audio for the uh, slideshow, but you'll still be able to see the pictures. So when the sound goes away, don't think something's happened. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start that video.
All right, I guess that's the end of the video. So um, a lot of those pictures probably mean nothing to you, and you know you've heard the saying, uh, pictures worth a thousand words. Well, those are 10,000 words per picture and several inside jokes. So you probably picked up on the giggling from up here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we'll touch on it a little bit, but the, the last few pictures um, are kind of a testament to that God has a sense of humor um, because DC was not in the cards for us, uh, what it's supposed to be. But we ended up there. We probably could plan a mission trip there too. I think they might need it. So tonight, um, I want us to, to first get started. Brother Paul, do you want to come join us? To let you know, yes, there's one individual in D.C. that needs Jesus. Because <laughs> he almost met him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I've got, they've been giving me a hard time about the teacher coming out of me. I've got an order here. And uh, Brother Paul, we'll start with you, um, if somebody can pass him a microphone. <laughs> first off, first off, I want to let everybody know that the trip was a lot of work. It was a lot of prayer, a lot of ministry that went into it, and I have heard comments several times from people, including myself, that there was a lot of leisure time, that there was a lot of traveling and sightseeing and such. And yeah, there was, but the whole thing that I was really brought to myself was the bulk of the ministry, the bulk of the outreach, the bulk of the sharing with people is done in those times. Whether it was in a food court, whether it was on a lakeside, whether it was in a grocery store or the airport, that's when we were able to actually stop and talk to people. The ministry part was a blessing in itself being able to minister to the pastors and the congregations that we went to see. But without the other part of it, we weren't able to get out to the people where the people were. And I have to eat crow because I wasn't really a lot of part of that because I was staying behind doing cooking and work at the churches and whatnot. But I'm saying that because I need to apologize to the group openly before the congregation. I, I was kind of a party pooper with that, but it's afterwards when I come back and when I started praying on it that, that I saw that's the necessary part. It's not a money waster, it's not time waster, because that's where all the fellowship and that's where all the outreach and ministry is actually done. But that's all I got to say. Well, that's very well said. Uh, we did spend a lot of time uh, doing work as well as, uh, as he said, the leisure time. And, and we had some awesome opportunities that we'll share about uh, as the um, night goes on. Um, there'll be some pictures that I've, I'm going to click through. I'm not just texting up here. I've got the slideshow on my phone. Um, just like the church at Linden uh, and picture of the inside. And half the group stayed in Linden and the other half stayed in Montpelier um, so in the basement of the church at Linden is where uh, brother Paul fixed a lot of the meals and uh, served them to us here on this table and then we also um, did some prayer walking so Annabeth would you like to talk about that okay so um, is it on okay it is just okay <laughs> um so my group stayed at Linden, and um, I guess the second day, we started tearing up the wood and stuff at Joel and April's house, um, or tearing up the carpet, and then going to paint it the next couple of days. But um, in between, while we were doing that, we decided to go prayer walking, and by the church, 
well, I guess, if you're walking around the block from where Joel and April live, they're, like, on the corner. So um, the church was not very far at all. And then if you keep going up the road, there was Linden University. Linden and Institute. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, we walked from Joel and April's house and around there to the church and the lighthouse where we stayed and up to the institute and prayed there at the church. And another group went behind Joel and April's house and down a street there, I think. And I don't think my group prayed prayer walk in Montpelier. So I don't really know where they went. I think they went by the church and then a couple of stores maybe and um, by some of their houses. But Yes, so Joel and April uh, Stoddart that she's speaking about are the pastors at, uh, or is the pastor and his wife at Linden Center Baptist Church. And, um, so and the Linden Institute that she spoke about is uh, actually the town's school. It's a private institution, but it is their, the school that the students uh, that are in the town have access to um, because the town will pay their tuition to go there. It, it's kind of like a hybrid, I guess you could say, between a public and private school. Um, and so prayer walking took place uh, there around the, the school and, and just really in the heart of the town. Um, and as she touched on, uh, Joel and April uh, had some things there in the parsonage that they needed some help with. And uh, so we've got some pictures here, some work that was done. You probably saw these pictures in the um, slideshow. Miss Kelly, do you want to? That was Kelly and Aubrey spent a lot of time on some stairs. <laughs> uh, we said we were going to go in the painting business when we came back, but we haven't done it yet. <laughs> um, Yes, uh, Aubrey and I spent a lot of time in that stairwell, and we, like, tag-teamed. So she would go paint the top, and then I w we would have to go back and forth, back and forth, up and down the stairs. So we got the stairs painted. Uh, but the day before, while they were prepping everything to get ready for the stairs, a group of us ran to the dollar store, the local dollar store, to get some items that we were going to need later in the week. And when we were coming back, we're going down the road, and we look, and we're like, is that a dog? It's a bear, it's a bear, it's a bear. Well, none of us could get our phone. We were so excited that we were seeing a bear that we could not get a picture of it. So the rest of the group does not believe us that we saw a bear. But we did see a bear crossing the road. I think it was a Wampahoofus. I think you're right. <laughs> uh, we'll save the Wampahoofus story for later. But if you have questions about what a Wampahoofus might be, you can see one of us afterwards. Very intriguing legend from Vermont. Um, so next, now this, this is one of those 10,000 words picture because this was a spread put out before us by Miss Nellia Taraski. Uh, Nellia is Brother Chap Taraski's wife at Resurrection Baptist Church in Montpelier. And Miss Nellia came from Mexico and brought her cooking skills with her. And we had quite the fiesta uh, there and um, uh, we have several, I think, from Vermont watching tonight. Uh, I know I've sent out messages uh, to folks. And uh, so, hi. Hey, everybody. Um, 1,300 miles away. We're glad you could join us. And uh, we're probably a little envious of your weather right now. Um, but, yes, we really enjoyed uh, Miss Nellie's cooking. And I uh, think we might have cooked some salsa made some salsa a few times since we got home, uh, but it's nothing like what she made. It was hot, yeah. Yes. Okay, so next, um, I'm going to let Miss Rebecca speak on uh, painting in the sanctuary at Resurrection. Okay, this is at, uh, in Montpelier at Resurrection Baptist Church. And so we had half of our group were outside cutting trees down, and the rest of us were inside painting. So uh, it was Aubrey and Annabeth in the picture, and then Miss Kelly and myself, and Ryan. Um, he painted, he trimmed it up. Um, and so it was, it, we brightened it up. We did it white, and it brightened it up really well. And they had a baptistry that was, it was really dark, and we painted it, too, and just brightened up everything. And, of course, we didn't take after pictures. 
because nobody ever thinks to do that. But uh, yeah, the the painting was was a lot of fun, and um, it they got to enjoy it for about a month <laughs> before the church flooded. Uh, but um, it, it was a lot of fun, and uh, it was a, a great labor, but it was a labor of love, and uh, so we we really enjoyed getting to serve them in that way. Uh, Brother Jeremy, you and Jason and Gage, y'all might want to talk a little bit about this, <laughs> this next adventure. I, I really don't want to talk about it because it hurts to even look at it. Y'all ever done that? I know. Uh, we had a, Brother Chap had shared with me that uh, even before we went up there that they had a inspector from the state come in and in Vermont the ash tree has a certain beetle kind of like our pine beetles that get in it and destroy all, but they if they have ash trees on their property they all have to come down uh, brother chap had shared with I forgot how many thousands of dollars it was if you saw the big tree that was on the ground I think that was close to $6,000 just to cut that down. I said, Redneck could do it for $6. What are you talking about? And uh, so we, there were some immediate needs around the property, around the church, to where there were some leaning trees. There were some trees around the um, power lines, the field lines that fed to the house and back out to the street and things that needed to be failed. So I'm not going to say who engineered where they fell and how they failed, but they did fall. And uh, when the power company comes up and says, wow, somebody did a great job, I said, give a redneck a chainsaw and see what happens. Uh, but we did fall a couple of trees in between cars, some at angles that were pretty impressive to see. And uh, it, it, was, it was a labor of love. But, and, and we had a miracle take place. Yes. Oh, well, Jason, I, I told want, Jason we were going to put the uh, Indiana Jones theme song in um, to the slideshow because Jason had a, a reenactment of the... Yeah. It wasn't the big rock. The it big was a big, yeah. big ash tree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason. Uh, when we got started, me and Brother Jeremy and Paul, we got up there up on this hillside behind the church there at Resurrection Church. And we was trying to make our way up to the top of that thing, that hill. And the hill is about 60 to 70 degrees. And uh, the soil is very loose, very rocky. And this tree that Brother Jeremy's talking about, it's at least as long as Brother Jeremy's arm is as far as being round, at least a good three foot. I believe just the tip of his fingers were able to touch the side of it, of the stump that is. And we got a chainsaw, me and Brother Jeremy and Paul's were up there uh, cutting on it and uh, taking turns swapping the, the chainsaw back around because one was on one side and one on the other side. And at one time, Brother Jeremy even lost his footing and where it was at, he slid down by like two or three feet before he could catch himself. Well, that soil was very loose up there. And Brother Jeremy was on the saw this time, and, uh, and I remember Paul hollering out, run. And the next thing, so next thing I, I saw was these, this big old ash tree coming my way. So y'all folks know what I did? I R-U-N-N-O-F-T. <laughs> but as I was trying to run down the hill, my running quickly evolved into rolling down the hill. And I, I don't know how far I rolled, and I don't know how far those trees were sliding down the hill. And I don't know how many times I rolled over and, uh, and I was going backwards also. And I remember getting on that ground, laying there looking up, and I, oh, yep, that hurts, yep, that hurts. And I finally stood up and I heard Brother Jeremy holler out, are you okay? And all I could do was give him two thumbs up. <laughs> so the, I guess that was a praise because I had about six hematomas <laughs> on my body. And I still carry one right now on my big left toe. It's still black. But uh, that could have turned out really bad. So I was, I was a good praise that being blessed by God during that time. Because that could have really got serious really quick. I don't know if Paula will ever let him go back with us 
but uh, we we shared a room and mornings sure were loud. There was a lot of grunting <laughs> from all of us, but especially Jason trying to get off get off that cot. <laughs> Just to give you. A Ryan, I want to jump in. Yes. Okay. The biggest part about that that Jason didn't tell you is that that the side of that hill was strewn with shale rock. And we're talking the flat pieces of shale. Some of them were 15, 18 inches in diameter. And they were in all kind of weird angles. But in his trip down the hill, God saw fit to have him clear every one of those or he'd been cut to ribbons. So that's one of the things that I really remembered on that. And I'm praising God for that he helped him stay clear of that. And it, and further injury than what he did get. And they learn when the preacher says, watch this, you better watch it. You better watch. <laughs> no, no, yeah. No. That wood, are you going to share with where yes, the wood I went? Good. So it was interesting <clears throat> when we went up in the spring, uh, during, over spring break, God was already working then for this, about cutting all of these trees and what we're fixing to show you and talk about. Um, because there was a family that needed firewood, there was a church that needed trees removed, and there was a church that said, that had no clue about the other two needs, and they said, hey, if you need a wood splitter, let us know, because we've got one, just throwing that out there. And so those three things were happening all independently, um, but all orchestrated by the Lord. And uh, so next, um, we're going to talk about the reason we were cutting and splitting that wood, um, let's see. Well, that's still that's still us. So the reason we were cutting and splitting the wood uh, was for um, Daniel and Maddie uh, Melendez. And uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself in my notes, and I made them, and I still can't read them. Uh, so before we could split the wood and get it hauled off, we had to go and find a U-Haul trailer. And it was quite the excursion looking for a U-Haul trailer. Um, and Dalton was my, uh, he rode shotgun that day. And he was my navigator. Yeah, uh, being Ryan's navigator is fun, by the way. I loved it. Every once in a while, you know, me and Ryan would have fun conversations about stuff that off the wall, random, but it was great. But we go to get a U-Haul and it's, Brother Ryan, Brother Jason, and myself are all together, and we went to several places. One guy gave us a hitch and was like, just bring it back to me. I mean, really hospitable. I didn't expect him to be so hospitable, but he was. He's like, just bring it back to me. So we get the hitch, and now we got to go to another place and another place. But we went to one place, and I met this woman that had the coolest maple leaf tattoo that I'd ever seen. And it's, that's how I started talking to Jesus about Jesus with her, was her tattoo. I was like, I love your tattoo. That's so cool. Well, she saw my shirt, and she was like, well, what are you, you're not from here. Of course, it was obvious. And <laughs> she, uh, she starts talking to me, and she's, we're having this little conversation. She tells me about her working at a bar and her life, kind of. And I was, I was like, well, is it a good bar? You know, <laughs> and my, being me, that, that can go anywhere with a question, but she told me, she said, no, it's, it's a bar bar, and I, okay. Well, we're talking, and we're having this conversation about Jesus, and she says, well, y'all need firewood? And I said, yeah, we're actually fixing to go get a trailer to go get some firewood. You know, we're going to cut it and take it to this family. And just out of the blue, she's like, well, let me give you my number. I was like, uh, Ryan, Ryan. Like, I'm trying to get his attention so fast, it's not even funny. Um, but we go to get her number and she says I know somebody that has firewood they just want rid of it you could take it to wherever you need it to and even though we didn't use the firewood that that lady had I felt like me and her had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about Jesus and it was the most random conversation it could have been but to me that stood out because this lady looked like she had had a rough life she had she didn't know Jesus she didn't go to, I, she just stood out to me. And so I've been praying reluctantly every night since I've met that woman. Don't know her name, that she found Jesus, and I hope that she did. Also, that same night, 
myself, Gage, and Noah, we had a sort of a brotherhood moment, the three of us did. We stayed up late and shared scripture and just had a real coming close to Jesus. So it was a great day that day. Yes. So you can see in the picture, you see our U-Haul trailer that we fetched. We went all the way to Burlington, which is the northwest corner of the state, so that we could go back to Montpelier with the trailer, which is in the center of the state, so that we could take the wood to the east side of the state. <laughs> so th that, that trailer racked up a lot of miles. Um, but uh, Paisley and Ori, y'all want to talk about kind of what, where we took the wood and what we did with it and our purpose behind that? Yes. Okay, so if y'all don't know, putting wood on a trailer takes a lot longer than taking it off. <laughs> and my mom found out that wood hurts. <laughs> because her own daughter, not me, Aubrey, decided... Not here to defend herself. <laughs> yeah, decided we were, we were on a roll. We had us an assembly line, and we were unloading that wood underneath the awning so here we go and maybe just a couple of seconds before it was said y'all be careful somebody's gonna get hit and then next thing you know oh my face <laughs> and we all stopped and said oh no why did we not listen but anyways so we unloaded that there for what was her name uh, Maddie yes. and Daniel Melendez yes and the reason why they needed the wood is because they go through 14 to 16 cords of wood just in a winter, and that's a lot of wood, a lot of wood. It is, and they are facing some trials right now in their family. Uh, Daniel, um, who is uh, Maddie's husband, um, is has been diagnosed with cancer, and uh, so with li resources being limited and with his health being poor, he was not able to uh, um, secure the wood that they were going to need um, for this winter uh, as he would, you know, years prior. And so even though we just scratched the surface of that need, um, we, we found that we could assist them uh, in, in a little way uh, to, to help get them some wood to burn this winter. Uh, I actually talked with Maddie um, I hope they're watching. Uh, I sent her a message this afternoon, and she asked that um, we be in prayer uh, for Daniel. He's uh, going to be going in for a radiation treatment um, this coming week, and will have to be isolated from his wife and kids for two weeks until all the radiation is out of his system. And uh, But Maddie's parents um, are uh, Brian and Kathy Summers, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about them later. But this, all of uh, these families uh, come from the East Peachum Baptist Church that I've spoke about uh, before. And uh, they are right now without a pastor. And um, uh, Brother Chap from Montpelier has actually been pra pastoring there in their church while they, uh, their church family is, is homeless due to the flooding. Uh, or you got anything you want to add? You've been awful quiet. Well, uh, after we got all the woods, uh, get, who was it? Daniel and Maddie. We were coming and going to the road, and we went to this farm. Uh, while we were going there, there was a big tree in the road. And in my mind, I'm like, have we already done enough wood already? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, uh, uh, what was it? Did you, were you there? Unloading the wood, or somebody. We handled it though, didn't yeah. we? And, yeah, and uh, Miss Kelly was coming over, and Mom said, "Hold on, let me get a picture of her coming by." So, in this picture is uh, Maddie in the red shirt, and she's got one of their sons hugged up there, and one of the daughters uh, standing there with her. And um, anyway, they are just a, a just a sweet family, and uh, think so much of them, and just some really good friends that um, I think we can say we're fortunate to have made in Vermont. And unfortunately, Daniel was at work at the time that we were there, so we didn't get to see him. 
and uh, we disappointed didn't get to see him. The timing just wasn't. We were we were running out of time, and uh, so we we couldn't really be flexible with their schedule. But um, we were able to get some wood stacked there that still needed to dry, and then we had some wood that was already dried uh, to the point where it could be burned that we stacked under a wood shed at the rear of the home. Um, let's see. So, yes. Yeah, go ahead. These, these little families that live out like that, one of the things that stuck out the most to me, that's the most beautiful landscape I've ever seen. They live out, when, they're, when we say in the country, there's a house right here, and then another couple miles, you might see another house. But you'll see all the red barns you want to see. And oh, yeah. it's, these people, it took me back to realize that I was, you know, to be fortunate for the things that I have, because they take care of their sales. They have little gardens here and there, and what they have is what they have on that, on that land. That's that's what they that's their whole year's worth of food and water, and it was so. I, it was it was a real blessing to get to see it, and a lot of the places in Vermont was like that. We'd be in a little town, and a few minutes later, you'd be out on a complete dirt gravel road, you know, looking at houses that are just farm after farm after farm after farm after, you know, and it was really a blessing. Yes, a lot of self-sustaining farms. Um, so, Mom, it's your turn. Okay, this picture that's up now was uh, made on one of our sightseeing days. This was Lake Willoughby, which, as you can tell, is just absolutely beautiful. Um, the shirts that we have on, which a lot of us have on tonight, and several of y'all purchased those to, to help fund our mission trip, uh, the scripture on the back says, How can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And that's Romans 10:14. And the shirts were a conversation starter. And we wore those, like I said, when we were out sightseeing. And we would talk to people, but people would come up to us before we ever had a chance to say anything to them and ask us about our shirts. Because, you know, when you've got 14, 15 people roaming around with the same shirts on, you know, it, it catches people's attention. And it was just such a blessing. Um, to have those because even like in the parking lot at Dunkin' Donuts or on the pier in Newport and in the airport, people were constantly asking us about our shirts and it just opened up so many witnessing opportunities that we probably wouldn't have had otherwise if we'd have just, you know, all chosen our, our thing to wear that day. But the, the shirts were a, a great conversation starter. We had several opportunities to share with people at Dunkin' Donuts. I've never had so much Dunkin in my life. I've never seen so many Dunkin Donuts on one trip. Like there's so many. They have as many Dunkins as we do Dollar Generals. Yes, somebody had to eat them. Somebody had to do it. So on the same travel day where we visited Lake Willoughby, we were traveling up the, the east side of the state and uh, I wanted um, everyone to see you know the Canadian border so we drove up to a town called Derby Line and uh, before, ever, before I even let folks get out of the car I do not cross the line because we want to get back home with you so we got to see Canada got to look at Canada right across a little rock uh, barrier and um, then we came back down into the town of Newport and uh, that's where this picture was made but yeah, we get over there in the town of Newport, and we go on this dock out on the lake, and you can see, you know, from the dock, you can see into Canada uh, across the across the pond, I guess you could say. Yeah, Lake Lake Mint for Magog. Yeah, and uh, uh, upon coming on to the dock, we see this man. He's by himself. He's just taking in the scenery, and uh, I took a picture of it of him, and it was pretty nice. Like it was a cool, just the way the scenery looked, and then. Turns out we, you know, end up talking to him and we start talking about the Lord and, you know, stuff like that and how he has a, you know, relationship with him. And uh, I think Ryan even invited him to come to uh, Linden, was it? He uh, invited him to come to Linden for a Sunday service in the morning. So we got done talking to him and uh, went on about our about our way we had other places to go because you know 
we may have been going sightseeing, but we was on God's time. You know, it's a good way of looking at it. So come Sunday, and we go, and we're over at Linden Baptist Church, where Joel, Joel preaches. And uh, uh, there's the, the sanctuary there. Um, <clears throat> and Ryan, uh, we do some uh, prayer requests, and then we do some music, and Ryan gets up there, and he does a song on the piano. Well, there's not a mic stand, and uh, so I went from being Noah Carter to Mr. Mike, and uh, Mike stand, and I held his mic for him <laughs> up there while he sang, and uh, I was glad my arm didn't get tired. Uh, so, but uh, it was pretty, it was pretty good. I was, I was sitting there thinking he's gonna take his sweet little time, and he's gonna make it. I'm gonna be sitting here up here shaking. But yeah, no, it was good. It was a beautiful song, Ryan. You did such a great job on it, and. Um, but it was an awesome the service. Guy that but we met on yeah. the dock, his name was John and John so Royer. Yeah, I was. Under. Yeah, I was, I was about. To, <laughs> it was so funny because we were not even thinking about it. Like I wasn't. I know I wasn't. But we're sitting there and we have a gentleman. You know, he raises his hand for prayer requests and we hear the voice. And he's like, "Yeah, my name is John." Everybody. And we turn around. around. It's John Royer from the dock. And he's like, I'm here for service, y'all. And I was like, heck yeah. He didn't probably say it like that because he's not like, you know, from Hamilton. But but it was it was a real blessing getting to meet John. John's a Christian. And uh, he, at the time that we met him, did not have a place, uh, did not have a church um, family. And uh, so hopefully, uh, even though it would be him commuting about 45 minutes one way to Linden, um, so hopefully he has made some friends there. He already had one friend in Linden that I think he was going to visit the day that, that uh, he came down to join us for Sunday service. But um, anyway, John John's a really cool guy. He plays music, so we hit it off pretty good. And uh, I think he may be watching tonight. We've, we've kept up with each other. We all friended him on Facebook. He was talking about wanting to move to warmer weather. We said, come check out Marion County. Just come on down. So we're expecting one day somebody in the back of our sanctuary to say, I have a prayer request, and us all turn around, and there's John. John so, Royer! John, if you're watching, we're, we're waiting on you. Um, we are waiting. Uh, so next, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Linden, uh, Lindenville United Methodist Church and the relationship that uh, the Baptist Church there in, uh, in Linden has with them. Okay, the pastor's wife at the Baptist Church, her name is April, Joel's uh, wife, She, th they have a really good relationship with the Methodist Church and the Baptist Church, and April does a lot with their children and a lot for the Methodist Church. And so some of our group that Miss Kelly was talking about earlier, that we saw the bear, we had went to the dollar store, and... Um, we on Sunday we had planned. Uh, Miss April had planned for us to do an ice cream social to surprise the Methodist Church because they're without a pastor um, to surprise them um, with an ice cream social and to just say, you know, we're we're praying for you, we're here for you. And um, Miss April got these little jars and we had enough for everybody there to give to them. And it's got two little mustard seeds in the little jar, and it's got. Um, a little piece of scripture that's talking about the have the faith of a mustard seed and it also says you are not alone and we gave these out to the uh, people at the Methodist Church and they just they were real surprised and glad we were there and um, so that was real neat to you know just encourage them because they're without a pastor um, so they um, they have they voted to come out of the Methodist, uh, United Methodist, and so this will be the first time that they are going to be looking for a pastor. Um, so we were just there to encourage them, so that was very nice. I really don't have much to say except that we all got up Sunday morning to go to church in Linden, and it's a beautiful church, y'all. It's they had the stained glass windows, and um, we were very privileged to get to have service there, brothers and sisters of 
April. And we're just, it was just a wonderful experience. The size of their congregations is amazing. I mean, they're just so small, and most of them are elderly people. So we, there was probably as many of us as there were members there yeah. at Linden Baptist Church that morning. And, and just to think about the things that we did at the pastorium, the tearing up the floor and painting and all that, they didn't have anybody that could do that for them. You know, so it took a group coming from Alabama just to come and do that. So it made you so appreciative of what we have here and makes you realize that there are just not many Christians up there. And then even the Methodist church that we went to, all the congregation was so elderly. There were hardly any young people there at all. So it just makes you wonder about the future of those churches. And you know, to, to show and explain this photo, um, we were uh, serving them ice cream. And because they're without a pasture and going through the transition of leaving the, they've already transitioned, leaving the United Methodist, um, we just wanted to give them some encouragement. I say we, it was all uh, Miss April Stoddart's uh, and Mr. Jo Brother Joel's uh, doings of organizing this, but uh, we helped serve an ice cream social to them. We snuck in while they were having service, which kind of felt fun and dangerous at the same time but but uh we we had a good time getting to serve them and fellowship with them and we didn't know anybody in that congregation but i think we made some some quick friends there and uh then before we left linden uh that that afternoon that was our final full day uh, in vermont we got our picture made with joel and april and i know joel wasn't going to be able to watch tonight because he said he was in a internet desert but that Miss uh, Miss April was at home, and so hopefully she's watching tonight. So we'll say hey to Miss April too. And um, so before uh, we go any further, um, and our two church families that we uh, are the families from the two churches, we've got our pictures made with them here. Before we go any further, there were a couple things that I wanted to share. Um, so we got to uh, also um, have some some good conversations with. Uh, Miss Kathy Summers, who is uh, Maddie Melendez's mother. And we didn't get to see Mr. Brian that day. He was busy out on the farm. But these are the families that are from East Peacham Baptist, uh, who are also without a pastor at the moment. And we got to, to talk with and pray with Miss Kathy. Uh, she and her husband are full-time farmers and uh, are just some of the sweetest, most devout uh, people that you could ever meet. And um, so we got to pray with them. Miss Kathy's battling her own uh, health issues. Um, and so we, we prayed with her uh, over that and, um, and just really enjoyed getting to spend a little bit of time with them. Uh, if when I came back this summer or from last summer, uh, if you got any maple syrup from me, uh, they were my, my distributor. That's where I got the maple syrup from. And... Uh, so next, uh, I'll kind of touch on that our, our plans didn't go as planned, uh, trying to get back home. We um, ended up having canceled flights uh, out of uh, Boston trying to get home, uh, which, you know, made for some fun extra time in Boston. We did get to go to Fenway Park. That was pretty fun. And, uh, but we ended up also renting minivans and driving from Boston to Washington, D.C. to catch our connecting flight. And, um, and I think all of that was uh, orchestrated as well because it presented some interesting opportunities, uh, one of which I will share, and then the next I'll let Noah and Miss Day share. Um, we were in the airport, and I wasn't sure if we were going to blow the rest of our missions budget on trying to bail Brother Jeremy out of jail because... <laughs> The, uh, the manager of the desk uh, at American Airlines was not very helpful, in fact, critical of our group just trying to get home. And uh, I learned you don't accuse a Baptist preacher of lying. That's dangerous. And, uh, but while we were waiting, and as stressful as it was on us, one of the things that I think uh, gave me some comfort in knowing that this was all just part of the plan uh, we thought our trip, and the purpose of our trip was over, um, but uh, I was trying to catch the manager to t 
to ask him a question. Didn't get to talk to him, but I um, turned and in my sour attitude griped to this lady that was standing there. I can you believe me? You know, just letting her. And I realized mid gripe that this woman is it has tears rolling down her face. And I was immediately convicted, you know, your sour attitude, you know, is not comforting this woman at all. I would say she was probably mid-60s, and um, her name was Margaret. And uh, I just stopped, and I said, I am so sorry. I said, I, is there something I can pray for you about? And then she really burst into tears. And she did not go into any detail, but she said yes. And uh, she was just so distraught. And so the Lord just laid an opportunity at my feet to get to pray with her. And um, so I, I left her and went back over to the desk where um, Brother Jeremy and his family were and was telling them about it. Well, right before we left, I could still see the woman standing over there waiting, and her flight had been delayed out of D.C. And so I went and gave her a big hug, and I said, we've got to go, but just want you to know we're still praying for you. And so I, I know that the Lord... Uh, provided her comfort uh, in that moment, I'm sure of it. Um, but then, uh, before we made it to the airport, uh, we had an interesting opportunity to see some sites in D.C. Uh, in the time that we had. And uh, I'm going to let uh, Noah and Miss Day, um, so I'll give my mic to Noah. Miss Day. It was a blessing in disguise that we got to see Washington. It was a rainy day, but <clears throat> we did, had seen some other sites, and we get to um, the, the wall, and Brian and Paisley had already scoped out where the section that my dad's name was at. And uh, it was, it really touched my heart that I got to see his name. He was a master sergeant in the Army, and his name was Bobby Sam Fry. And it really, it was a blessing to see that in, in person. Yeah, um, so, you know, with, with COVID hitting, um, Right before my senior year, it kind of just shut down a whole lot of things. That included senior trips. So that meant no getting to go to New York, no getting to go to D.C. and seeing all this great and cool things that, you know, we could have seen at senior year. And one of the biggest things that I really was looking forward to, to go on that kind of thing, was going right where I'm standing right there in that picture. And that's the Vietnam Memorial Wall. And... uh Lo and behold, me and Dave just so happened to be on the same trip, and we got the opportunity because that man's name right there is Charles D. Nowen. And uh, I will, real quick, that is my grandfather, Bill Nowen. That is his first cousin. And he had actually went to school at Treadwell High School in Memphis and had no idea that they were even related, had no idea each, each other existed. And uh, one day, my grandfather's best friend said, you know, there's this guy in school, he looks a lot like you. He's like, no, you're, you're kidding. No, there's not. Well, he saw him one day, and he was like, you know what, he looks a lot like me. <laughs> so he walks up to him and said, man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta ask you, man, because I'm getting a lot of these comments like, this guy looks like you, and now I'm seeing it, so I just gotta ask who you are. My name's Charles Nowlin. Well, my name's Bill Nowlin. Oh, we, we might be related. Yeah, that's cool. They got talking, school ended, granddaddy went home, Got, got into the house, and he said, Mom, do you know a Charles Nowen? Yeah, that's your first cousin. Oh, okay. So, just like that, they became so close, and Charles got to hang out with my grandfather and, and, and my, my grandfather's uh, best friend, Steve, and uh, they got to know each other for two weeks. From the time they met to when he got drafted to, to Vietnam, and by... February of the next year, he passed away, killed in action. Um, so that was a blessing for Granddaddy, and ever since then, Granddaddy it, it held a very hard, you know, big part in his heart. 
to have gotten to meet Charles and the sacrifice that he gave to our nation, and it was one of our biggest dreams. That's not in BC. That's actually in Guin, and I took that picture of my grandfather. There's this thing called the Traveling Wall, and it goes to wherever. It's booked, and just so happened in 2019, it got booked in Guin, and Granny was like, We're, we got to go, and I was like, okay, let's do it. So we go, and found his name on there, and I got that picture of him, and he was... He may not be smiling right there, but he and it's probably because he was about to break down in tears because it, it meant a lot to him to get to see that. But it was our dream, you know, before he passed that we get to go and we didn't get the opportunity. And I didn't ever think it would, you know, come with COVID shutting that trip down for my senior year. But lo and behold, flight gets canceled and we're like, oh, my goodness. Like, what are we, you know, what is going on? It's like the world, it just felt like the world was just coming down on us and like, you know, we're getting kicked in the tail like, my goodness. So we get these new cars, these vans, and we're driving. Styling. We were styling <laughs> profile. I had all this room. I mean, it was nice. It was pretty good. You got that right. <laughs> uh-huh. So we go and we get in our uh, in our hotel for the night. Get up in the morning. Everybody's got a. It was nice because everybody got finally got some rest. We're all smiling and like, let's go. We're ready to go. Let's go. So we get down the road and get the opportunity to go to Fenway. That was really cool. And then we go on to uh, D.C. And didn't even, it didn't even click till like maybe two minutes later. And I hit, it hits me. I'm like, I'm hitting on walls in D.C. We're gonna get, I said, Ryan, are we going to get to see some stuff? He said, yeah, yeah, why? And I told him, I said, I'd like to go to the wall. And then Miss Day said, oh, yes, me too. So we got to go. Exactly. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah, the rain. The r- yeah, that was, oh, my gosh. We got there and the rain started. I was like, Lord, please let it stop. When we came back around, the rain stopped. And we was like, let's hurry. Let's run. So I had a book. Just so happened to have a book. Just so happened to have a pe- uh, pencil. We're running down through there. I've got the information to find where, what section Charles's name is in. And I come right down. And as I find it, Ryan takes that picture and... I don't know if you have that picture of me pointing at it or not, but there's a picture of me that I got, and I thought it was really cool. And I'm pointing like my grandfather was in Guin. I'm pointing like he is. And that was that was a very special moment for me. And uh, it, it, it did my heart good to know that uh, that I got to do that. And um, I'm sure grand, Granddaddy was looking down, grinning, and then that little uh, <laughs> that little laugh he does. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was. Noah had talked about it raining, and I had already made the decision not to go. And then it just immediately stopped. And then Ryan says, "We're going. We're going to, to so that you can see your dad's name." And we were we were on a crunch because it was time to go back yeah. to the airport. Right. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were running. Yes, but so it was it was a great trip um, on so many different uh, with so many different facets of of how uh, the Lord just blessed us and how He used us to be a blessing to others. Um, you know, we weren't up there to be superheroes. That's not what we were there for. We were just there to be servants, to be hands and feet, and uh, to come alongside what God was already doing in Vermont and what he's still doing in Vermont. Um, so to wrap things up, uh, you probably have heard us discussing the, uh, the floods that uh, devastated the town of Montpelier. Businesses have been flooded and closed and have no, uh, doesn't look like there is a chance that they will reopen in some places. And, and that can be very hurtful for a tourist town when, you know, your downtown businesses, the heart of tourism there in the town, are uh, not going to reopen. And so Montpelier has taken a financial blow as a city. Uh, this is their capital city, too. But the flood directly affected Resurrection Baptist Church. And uh, so the painting that we did uh, in the sanctuary, all that sheetrock has been torn out. Um, That's why I said earlier they got to enjoy it about a month. Um, But uh, 
Brother Chap and Miss Nelia and Genesis, the three of them have had the most positive outlook on this and uh, just supplied by from the Lord. Uh, but they said, you know, this is an opportunity for new beginnings. There were a lot of things that they wanted to do uh, there at Resurrection, but the opportunity had not presented itself yet. And so through this, they feel like, you know, we've kind of got a fresh slate. Um, and uh, But there's there's still a lot of things that need to be done. I talked to Brother Chap recently, and God has provided time after time after time uh, in the months after the flood uh, for them. A church from Texas uh, called, and well, uh, uh, their associational pastor uh, director called from Texas and said, I have eight pastors in my association that are electricians. We hear that your electrical boxes and all wiring is going to be have going to have to be moved out of the basement upstairs. We want to come rewire your entire church for free. Um, if y'all can, you know, get the materials, we will donate all the labor uh, with our eight licensed electricians. State of Vermont, you have to have a state licensed electrician to supervise or sign off on um, on those projects. Well, the Lord sent a uh, Christian state licensed electrician to chap and uh, said you know he said I think I can get your electricity turned back on you know for the uh, the time being at your church for under a thousand dollars and that was going to be a, a big task for them because they've been told you know you got to get everything upstairs but you've got two and a half years to do it so they've got some some windows of time there that they can work with uh, they have to have a new boiler um, for their heating system and uh, they weren't sure how they were going to have be able to pay for that because they've already had to finance a new roof another church calls and says we want to pay off your twenty thousand plus dollar loan on your roof and so that that frees you up and then they found out about the boiler they said we'll also commit to paying for your boiler chap laughed on the phone with me and he said when they see the price of the boiler they might change their mind but uh, I said you know there's there's nothing that that uh, God is can't work out obviously he's already worked out so much and uh, so I ended the phone call with chap saying uh, he says you know if if there's a way I asked him he didn't just volunteer this I asked him is there a way that we can help and he said maybe in the future um, he said, all these churches that keep reaching out, maybe you can adopt a room in the church and, and you know, put the flooring, sheetrock, uh, not necessarily with the physical labor, but, you know, to help financially with these things um, because a congregation of 15 to 20 just doesn't have the manpower or the resources to do something like that. Um, so there will be ways that we can continue to bless them. Uh, in closing tonight, um, I want us to just... Uh, have a word of prayer for them, and then we do have just a short video. The uh, New England Baptist Association interviewed Brother Chap, and uh, because, again, with the copyright stuff, we're not sure how playing this video over the live stream would be, so we're going to cut the stream after we pray, um, but I will post the video on the church Facebook page for anybody that's watching online that would like to go view that. It'll be there. It may already be on there but we'll repost it again so uh, if you will let's just bow our heads and say a word of prayer uh, and uh, just thank the Lord for this opportunity that we've had dear Lord thank you for giving our church the opportunity to be hands and feet in Vermont God there is there is nothing in Vermont that needs to be done that uh, you couldn't do on your own, Lord, but we are just so thankful that you chose for us to get to be a part of that and, uh, and, and that we could just uh, go and be a blessing to them and, Lord, and come home and have received such a blessing um, far greater than we probably could ever be to anyone. And, Lord, we are so thankful here on this stage, those of us that got to go, we are so thankful to our church family here at Hamilton that they provided uh, financial resources to, to help with this. And uh, Lord, this, is, this has been a life-changing experience, I believe, for all of us. 
And God, we just lift up our uh, new friends and family in Vermont, Lord, in Montpelier, in Peachum, in Barnet, and in Linden. Lord, we, we lift them up to you, God, because they're fighting uh, a spiritual battle there in such a desolate place, Lord, that needs the gospel. And God, you have, have given them the charge as uh, feet on the ground there in Vermont to spread the word there. And Lord, uh, just go and prepare a way for them and opportunities for them to share. And God, we just ask your blessing uh, over uh, whatever future opportunities we may have to go and serve in Vermont. And Lord, I just ask that you provide more hands and feet and more prayers uh, and uh, prayerful hearts, Lord, um, for uh, any future trips that we may take. And these things we pray in your name. Amen. All right, Brother Philip, if you'll play that video. I am Pete Trasky. I am the pastor of Resurrection Baptist Church. Everybody calls me Chap. I've spent 15 years as a first responder chaplain. The evening that the 